Marky D. All right, it's me, it's me, it's Marky D. It's time for a really obscure woman's wrestler to compete on Ring of the Hawk. This lady caught the hawk's eye in a previous video, and some of you showed an interest in seeing this episode, so I thought, why not? But of course, if you know a wrestler who could do the J.O.B., shove their name down in the comments, Jack. Today's wrestler is called Midnight. She was a bodybuilder winning lots of competitions before getting into professional wrestling. Some people say she's just another attempt at WCW trying to rip off China, just like when they used Asia. For me, that one was more blatant. I mean, just take her name. It doesn't go well for Asia on Ring of the Hawk. She was pretty terrible. Midnight was shoved at the WCW power plant, and from what I can tell, her first ever match was on WCW TV. So it's probably going to be a complete car wreck. This episode also perfectly highlights that you can't trust everything that you read on Wikipedia. In fact, the Hawk fell for it. Okay, it's midnight. Will she make the Hawk take flight? It all starts in late 99 on Nitro when Booker T is getting beaten up and Midnight rushes the ring. But it doesn't go well for her because a wild slap nuts appears. Double J, Jeff Jarrett. Within two seconds, she's smashed with a guitar. <sighs> You know you're in for it when an episode starts like this. What a way to debut. For the next few weeks she'd appear on Nitro coming to Booker T's aid saving him from beatdowns. The lights would go out and a clock would chime once and then she'd be here. And this woman had a seriously impressive look. She looks taller than Booker T and almost as hench too. This seems to be working well. When she appears there's a decent reaction from the crowd. Match 1 Nitro, Midnight who actually comes down the ramp for the first time. Not much noise for her entrance, I guess slowly walking to the ring isn't as dramatic as appearing in the ring after a blackout. She takes on Kurt Hennig. He asks what the hell is that? They lock up for a second before Hennig headlock takeovers her. She wraps her big legs around his neck and we're back to our feet again. They then both crash together in the middle of the ring, I think Midnight was supposed to stay on her feet but she falls. Hennig goes running again, Midnight leapfrogs him into a simple punch. She connects with a suplex into a pin now for a two. This makes Hennig mad who dumps his nappy of anger. He starts to beat the hawk out of her in the corner. Hennig snap mears her but doesn't seem to be in much of a rush. Now it's a scoop slam. Hennig puts on the abdominal stretch and keeps slapping her boobs for some reason. The Courage team don't even know what to say here and there's an awkward silence. The lights go out and when they come back on, Stevie Ray is here smacking Kurt Hennig. The ref calls for DQ. The lights go out again and Virgil is here helping Hennig. The lights go out again and now Arn Anderson is here. Man, did WCW forget to pay their electric bill or something? Not a good first match at all. I always question why when they do these mixed matches they have women face heavyweight male wrestlers. It makes them lose their impressive edge. I'm giving it a D because the crowd reacted to her at times, but this will need to improve. Match 2, Nitro. Asia with the Revolution versus Midnight. Yeah, we've seen this one before, and I still think it's hilarious how this match essentially killed off any believability of the Asia wrestler. Look how tiny she is compared to Midnight. Asia smacks her in the gut straight away. Midnight of an impressive leapfrog into a dropkick. Asia powers her off the pin and Midnight kips up. Asia manages a float over in the corner into a suplex. Midnight powers her off the pin and Asia sort of kips up. Now Midnight turns the match around and picks Asia up in an impressive submission hold. Then she throws her face first to the mat. Midnight attempts a wacky pin, which doesn't go well. Asia's back up now and she throws Midnight across the ring with a suplex. Another two for Asia. Asia keeps going for Snapmere, but she misses her elbow drop. Midnight goes back to the power game with a delayed vertical suplex. The ref is pulled out of the ring and the Revolution start battering Midnight. She's saved by Hacksaw Jim Duggan. This match managed to showcase her a bit more. I enjoyed it, it was definitely a match which played more to her strengths. It's a C. Match 3, Thunder, Mixed Tag, Asia and Perry Saturn with the Revolution versus Midnight who teleports into the ring and her partner is Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Duggan spends ages doing his gimmick whilst the Revolution fill their nappies with fear. Duggan wrestles Saturn for ages whilst Midnight does nothing except for a random jab at Saturn from the apron. Asia tries to attack Hacksaw so he grabs her haircut and brings Midnight in. She does that submission move above her head again and then drops Asia on her face. Midnight now connects with her leapfrog into a dropkick before Saturn rushes the ring and floors her. Midnight manages to block his next punch and starts boxing him. Harlem Heat has shown March into the ring. Perry takes Midnight down with a double leg and smacks her a bunch of times. Now it's a backdrop suplex from Saturn on Midnight. Asia's back in again. She manages one suplex, one elbow drop and one leg drop. Then there's a double down as they crash together and tags are eventually made. Later on Midnight argues with Asia on the ring apron which is a bad decision because Asia throws her out of the ring. 
Stevie Ray aggressively shoves Midnight back into the ring, which Booker T has a problem with. Asia rolls her up with a schoolgirl for a two. Hacksaw Jim Duggan wins the match when he hits a 2x4 on Saturn. Midnight is a bad partner and doesn't stick around to help Duggan out as he's killed after the match by the revolution. Not much going on in the ring here, but at least a slight bit of storyline progression for Midnight. It's a D. Well, old Stevie Ray doesn't seem to be a fan of Midnight at all. He doesn't understand why Booker T is hanging around with Midnight. This is so weird. I had it in my hawk head that she was their sister. Hell, even Wikipedia says she was a sibling. She wasn't. It's vaguely hinted that she might be a love interest for Booker T. Match 4, Starcade 99. Three on two handicap tag. Creative Control, the Harris Twins and Kurt Hennig, accompanied by Virgil, versus Booker T and Midnight, who teleports into the ring. This is supposed to be a six-person match, but Stevie Ray's being a dick and refusing to team up because he doesn't like Midnight. Booker starts the match with one of the Harris Twins and he's doing well, so against all logic, he tags in Midnight. She keeps kicking the Harris Twin whilst holding his arm, but it doesn't hurt him and he bum rushes her into the corner. She does manage a block in the opposite corner and she tags Booker back in. A complete waste of time tagging her in. She watches on as Booker T is double teamed on the outside of the ring. So far, she's completely harmed Booker T's chances in this match. Still, I didn't expect Booker to be the one to be isolated here. He eventually manages an axe kick and here comes Midnight. She drop kicks a Harris twin, but she's too slow making it to her feet. Hennig takes control and smashes her out of the ring. The Harris twins hit her with a bunch of gut punches on the outside until Booker saves her. She doesn't make it back to the ring yet as Hennig chops her off the apron. We are now back in the ring now. The Harris twins continue cheating. Midnight's leg muscles almost bulge out of her roid holes as she pushes Hennig towards Booker. The referee misses the tag. Stevie Ray's here now. A Harris twin scoop slams Midnight and elbow drops her three times. Booker breaks up the pin. Now it's a front slam from the Harris twin. He misses his middle rope elbow drop and Midnight has a chance to make the tag. Stevie Ray takes the referee as Booker T is tagged. He does a good amount of damage on his own before the referee starts looking confused. Hennig uses brass knuckles on Booker right in front of the referee. The Harris twin makes the pin with Stevie Ray stopping Midnight from breaking up the pin. A simply horrible match. For God's sake, get her in the ring with either women or smaller men's wrestlers. These guys aren't going to sell bird turd for her. It's an S. I hated it. Match 5, Nitro. Lethal Lottery Tag Tournament First Round. This one's actually missing from the network and it took me forever to get this one. So I hope you appreciate it like a punch to the gut. But it does beg the question, if I'm able to get it, why won't the WWE stop being lazy and just add it to the network so their Nitro is complete instead of just putting a message on saying this episode of Nitro is in the most complete form possible? It's a lie. Anyway, it's Stevie Ray and Booker T taking on the raging Cajun Lash LaRue and his partner Midnight. It was at this point I started to question, why does the clock strike once for Midnight's entrance? Wouldn't that make her one? Shouldn't it strike 12 times? It's dumb stuff like this in the world that makes me question my own sanity. Stevie Ray completely destroys Lash Roo with Midnight watching on. He tags Midnight into actually a massive crowd ovation. Midnight wants to lock up, but Stevie just shoves her down. Easy knockdown for Stevie now, but Midnight kips up and stands at him like she's Superwoman. Calm down, Midnight. It wasn't that impressive. You're going to have to do a bit more than that to impress the Hawk. She manages to suplex Stevie for a two count. Booker T doesn't want to see them fight anymore and he tags Stevie. Midnight manages a leapfrog, but Booker T stops her from doing anything else. He's gonna kick her, but he hesitates. He doesn't want to hurt her. Now they do a bunch of hip toss reversals into the weakest backbreaker I think I've ever seen. But that is deliberate. Booker doesn't want to hurt her. Stevie is livid. Midnight smacks him one. Stevie ends up hitting Booker T and Midnight and finally Lash Luru with his slapjack weapon. Somehow the ref misses all three shots. Lash conveniently falls into a pin and that's how it ends. There was nothing here and this was not worth my time and efforts to find this match. It feels like Midnight does less oh, every match. No. It's an S. Match 6, Nitro, Lethal Lottery Tournament, second round match. Flair and Crowbar with Daphne versus Lash LaRue and the teleporting Midnight, aka 1. Her own partner is so scared that he falls over. Lash and David Flair start this one. Stevie Ray is on commentary calling Midnight a jacked up hoochie. He refuses to reveal why he doesn't like her. Stevie asks when Midnight is actually going to be doing something. Yeah, I'm starting to agree with him. She does need to do something. All three guys are fighting and she's just standing on the apron like a moron. Finally, after five minutes, Stevie Ray gets up on the apron and forces Lash to tag in Midnight. She gorilla presses Lash on top of Crowbar. Shoulder block from Midnight now. She does do an impressive cartwheel into a dropkick, but she can't do anything else because Stevie Ray grabs her leg and tries to drag her out the ring. She seems to really struggle getting out the ring. It's awkward. On the outside, Ray smacks a one. Booker T runs out and shoves Stevie Ray away. 
Stevie responds by smacking him in the back with the slapjack. Lash LaRue is actually doing much better on his own. He has the match won, but the Italian crew rush the ring and kill him with the ref distracted. Vito hits a big impaler DDT and finally the ref takes his Ritalin and makes it back to the ring to count the three. Absolute chaos and Midnight looked dumb throughout. I had hoped we'd be seeing something in this woman, but my hope now has completely faded. She's another one that just wasn't ready. It's an S. It turns out the reason Stevie doesn't like Midnight is because he feels offended that Booker T felt he had to get someone in to watch his back. Stevie Ray thinks he should be the man to do it. I don't know why Booker T has so much loyalty to Midnight. Nothing's been explained. Match 7, Thunder, Stevie Ray vs Midnight. At least her entrance is quick. If Stevie wins this match, Midnight has to go away. If Midnight wins, he has to accept Midnight as part of Harlem Heat. We start with a lockup, but it's surprisingly Midnight with a quick punch to the gut. She ducks the clothesline and connects with a dropkick. Midnight aggressively hammers him in the corner. Ray responds by aggressively shoving her into the corner and smacking her one. It's a big clothesline from Stevie now. He connects with a scoop slam into an elbow for a two. Stevie doesn't seem to be in a rush to beat her. Big elbow to the face now and he angrily stares at the camera. Another pin is made, but Stevie pulls her up. We get a sleeper hold for ages now. Midnight tries to fight out of that one, but she's hit down again. Finally, an actual move, Stevie hits a big side slam. Stevie Ray has his slapjack weapon again, but Booker T runs out to the ring to stop him. He hands the weapon to Booker T. The match continues. Stevie hits a power slam. Midnight is finished. Or not, because she slowly rolls Stevie up with a small package. It didn't even look like Stevie was fighting to get out of that one. Midnight has won, and Stevie must now agree to accept her into Harlem Heat. Midnight does the Harlem Heat hand taunt thing and hugs Stevie Ray. Then he smacks both of them out with the slapjack. Who didn't see that one coming? Probably the most interesting match so far overall because it told a story. She didn't really do anything in the way of wrestling though. But I didn't actually hate this one. It's a C. Match 8. Final match. Thunder. Triple threat. It's Midnight versus Booker T. Wait, no, Stevie smacks him with a steel chair backstage. So I guess it's another one-on-one -on -one singles match between these two. It's Stevie Ray with the aggressive start this time. He bashes her time and time again in the corner. Stevie sends her running into a back elbow as the ring squeaks like a mouse of asthma. He sends her running again, but this time into a clothesline. Now it's a nice bicycle kick from Stevie Ray. It's just a two because Stevie lets her up. Midnight awkwardly runs the ropes now into a big power slam from Stevie. That one did not look good. He can't get the pin because Booker T's here now. It will now be a triple threat match. But Stevie gets the mic, leaves the ring, and says that there has to be a winner of this match. He lets himself get counted out, but the other two must now fight each other. Midnight and Booker T shake hands and here we go. Booker T shoulder blocks her down, but she kips up. He does it again, and this time she can't kip up. She manages a couple of ducks now into, guess what, a drop kick. Midnight sends Booker running, who sort of nails her with a Harlem sidekick. It looks horrible and it clearly doesn't connect. Midnight smacks Booker, who looks surprised. He kicks her in the gut and looks for the axe kick. But no, Stevie pulls him out of the ring and hits Booker with the slapjack. Stevie rolls him back into the ring and tells her to make the pin. But instead, she rolls Booker on top of herself and that gives Booker T the win. Stevie's arguing with her on the apron, but she drop kicks him away. He returns and hits her in the face with the slapjack. It's a good story, but she looked really inexperienced in this match. It just wasn't a good performance. It's an oh, S. No. Game over. Midnight would appear at Sold Out 2000 where Booker T faced off with his brother Stevie, but the match would end in controversy when a morbidly obese Ahmed Johnson attacked Booker T, causing the match to get thrown out. She paces around the ring but is too scared to stop the attack, so she's completely useless and worthless as someone who could have Booker T's back. Just like this entire run, it was a waste of time. A woman that Booker T apparently took to WCW to protect him, but she never did. Ahmed Johnson says that he can't believe Booker T turned his back on family for a piece of fish. This is the new Harlem Heat. She carries on hanging around with Booker T whilst he feuds with the new Harlem Heat. We get comments from Stevie such as Midnight is just a giant rat. She's never been family and she sucks. Within a month, she disappears from screens. I guess she didn't have Booker T's back after all. So there we go then, all and obsessed with her. This might have been more interesting if she actually had been their sister because she could have created a more interesting dynamic in the Harlem Heat feud. Midnight left WCW because she was insulted by how low her pay was compared to the other women on the show who didn't have the same athletic credentials as her. All that's left to do is shove Midnight a final grade on the Ring of the Hawk Season 3. Man, it's hard to choose who was worse between her and Asia. Midnight at least had a storyline going on, but her wrestling was no better. She continually had to face larger wrestlers too. Her booking was terrible. 
It's like if you took China and had her facing off against The Undertaker within her first month in the WWF. And I think that's a fair comparison. China would never have made it in those circumstances, would she? In the end, Midnight is just as bad as Asia, but she did have a better look. And that's literally the only thing separating them. So into the shove it zone she goes, and if you don't agree with that, you're a worthless geek and it shows.